Hey folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio on a workbench Wednesday. This is my more or less weekly vlog where I talk about whatever's happening right now at the studio, do a little show and tell, whatever. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are and whenever you happen to be watching this. I've been getting ready to jump into Thunder Mesa 2.0, which is the reimagining, redesign, realignment of the ON30 Thunder Mesa layout. And as I do that, I've been taking everything off the tracks and putting them onto shelves, you know, all the cars and locomotives and everything. And I was just over there looking at my collection of Thunder Mesa locomotives. And I thought that would be a good topic for a Workbench Wednesday. So join me, if you will, and um, we'll take a look at the entire Thunder Mesa Mining Company engine roster as it exists today. Starting things off, we've got locomotive number one, the Mark Davis, Mark F. Davis. Uh, this locomotive is named in honor of legendary Disney animator and Imagineer, Mark Davis, one of my favorite all-time Disney artists. And gosh, what can I say about this thing that hasn't been said before? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a scrap box special. Uh, I built this in over the course of a, you know, like a mad weekend. Uh, on top of a Bachman cable car truck. It's a, it's a four-wheel truck down here, a little power truck, as you can see right there. And, uh, it, you know, it's picking up power from the rails right now to light the headlight. It does not have a decoder in it. Uh, it's not DCC, so I can't run it here on the Thunder Mesa layout. In fact, I think the motor's burnt out at this point from sitting on the rails with the uh, DCC AC current running through it for the DCC system. So I'm getting ready to rebuild it. Um, I'm going to rebuild the whole thing from the, from the chassis up on top of a, uh, a new uh, Bachman trolley car chassis. And this time add some uh, added decoder and some sound and all that. It's going to be slightly bigger than it is now, which is too bad. I really like the tiny little proportions of this thing. Here, let me flip it around so you can see the other side. But, you know, I really like the way this thing looks as it is now. But let me let me just point out some of the details on here. Um, the uh, engineer is scratch built from wire and Sculpey. The uh, cab uses printed paper textures. There's real wood back here for the boiler. The boiler itself, I used parts from a, I think it was a roundhouse HO scale um, tank car kit. That's the boiler. This is part of a stack. The top of the boiler is part of a stack from uh, an IHC 440. The stack itself is from a Rapidograph ink pen cartridge. The headlight is from a Bachman Porter. Um, this tank up here is from a uh, Bachman ON 3260, the water tank, and then, you know, various <laughs> dials and handles and um, bells and whistle, whistles from my scrap box to round the whole thing out. A lot of people ask about the cow catcher up front. That is also from an IHC 440. Um, <laughs> it's just a bit of whimsy, you know. I just thought it would be funny to have a cow catcher on the front of this thing. Um, it, of course, it'd be more practical to have a, have a coupler up there. And maybe when I do the rebuild, I'll have a, you know, I still want to have the, this kind of pilot, an old time pilot, but I'll do, I'll put a coupler in there too, a long, long shank coupler, I think. Anyway, that's, uh, Thunder Mesa number one, the Mark F. Davis, not running at this moment and scheduled for a full rebuild. Now here is Thunder Mason number two, which is clearly a work in progress, though the tender is just about done. Um, I'm backdating this one to the 1880s, the, the stock Bachman, you know, inside frame 440 is, you know, around a turn of the century looking engine. So I wanted to do something a little bit older. Um, and I've got a 3D printed uh, boiler and domes, cab, all that stack from the Cumberland shops, which I'm using to backdate this locomotive. 
So that's going to be a fun one. It'll get the full fancy 1880s paint job, as you can see here on the, the tender. I've already started it with the gold print striping and all that. That's going to be a beauty. Named in honor, honor of uh, Harper Goff, Disney Imagineer, legend, fantastic artist, extraordinaire. So that's one that's uh, still in the early phases, still on the workbench. Thunder Mason number two. Similar story here with the number three. This is another uh, Bachman inside frame, 440. I just haven't begun to disassemble this or anything yet. This, this is going to be number three, named for uh, Imagineer Claude Coates. And uh, I haven't quite dis decided on the full direction I'm going to go with it yet. So that's why I haven't really done anything on it. Um, it it's pretty much just still factory out of the box. Runs great. These little Bachman 440s are, are, are great runners. Uh, if you've ever thought about uh, adding one to your roster, I can highly recommend them. Though they're no longer in production, you can pick them up uh, on eBay quite often. That's where I got this one, I think. Anyway, <laughs> this will be number three of the Claude Coats. And that brings us to number four on the roster. Pretty much stock Bachman inside frame 440 though I have given it a, a pretty fancy paint job. This one's named for Earl Vilmer. And a lot of even hardcore Disney fans don't know who Earl Vilmer was. He was the construction superintendent. He was a real railroad guy that Walt Disney hired to build the Disneyland Railroad. He was the construction foreman, uh, general manager on, of the Disneyland Railroad. Construction worked directly for Walt Disney. And then after that, he became the first general manager of Disneyland. So that's who Earl Vilmer was. And later, he, they brought him out of retirement, too, to uh, build the railroad at uh, Walt Disney World. So he was involved in both of those projects. I'm very happy with this engine. Love this engine. It's a great runner, once again. Uh, the only thing I might change on this is I might do a new laser cut cab for this one. Um, this is the original Bachman cab just with a fancy paint job on it. Love this engine. Thunder Mason number four. Locomotive number five currently is a Bachman Forney, a 244T. Uh, but that's going to change. I'm actually going to convert this into a 240 with a shorty tender behind it. Similar to the uh, Ernest Marsh at Disneyland, though it's not going to have the same bright red paint job. It'll have the usual, you know, green and gold kind of paint job the Thunder Mesa engines have. Uh, love this engine. Can't run it right now because it's a Forney. It's got a great big butt and hangs out over my, uh, <laughs> my sharp radius curves on the Thunder Mesa layout. Uh, so uh, sounds great. Runs great. I got it in trade from a friend of mine that I did some artwork for and uh, really would like to jump into this project and uh, you know it just it, it just takes getting up the nerve to cut this thing apart because we've got to cut right through the frame here and everything to uh, convert this into a, a 240 but the, it's going to be named Ward Kimball uh, after of course the legendary Disney artist and animator uh, extraordinaire train lover total train geek uh, Ward Kimball, um, since it bears the same number, number five, as uh, the the uh, the Forney at the park uh, at Disneyland bears, even though this one's not going to be a Forney. You know, it's Thunder Mesa logic. It, it'll work out. Going to be a beautiful engine when it's done. Can't wait to get into that project. Now, the next two engines I want to talk about together at the same time because they always seem to be seen together, uh, and they're named for Two animators who were best friends, uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, uh, number six and number seven. Uh, these are a pair of uh, Bachman 042 Porters, just basically with some custom paint and decals. Uh, the Frank Thomas is the more detailed of the two. I built a whole new cab for it, and the cab, if you look closely, is based on the cabs of the Big Thunder locomotives at Disneyland, and I'm probably going to do the same treatment for the Ollie also. I'll build a, a cab like that so they match a little bit better. 
Just a little detail I want to point out here, and I neglected to point it out on uh, the Earl Dilmer. The coal uh, back here in the uh, coal bunker is real. This is real coal that I picked up near uh, Silverton, Colorado. Got a baggie of it and broke it up with a hammer and uh, glued it in place on top of the plastic coal load that these, uh, these porters come with. Fun little engines, great. I often run them uh, in tandem as a, a, a double header, and uh, that's really fun. Do that some of the open studios, uh, send those out, to Frank and Ollie out together again. Next up on the roster, we have the R.H. Gurr, named after Bob Gurr, just Bob to the cruise. That's what they call this Stearns Heisler, one of my absolutely favorite locomotives to run on the layout because it just runs fantastic. Um, named it for Bob Gurr because it's basically a mechanical marvel and <laughs> Bob is, uh, you know, a mechanical genius. Uh, longtime Disney Imagineer, worked directly with Walt Disney on things like the Autopia and the Matterhorn and the Omnimovers and the Haunted Mansion and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is just a, it's a uh, stock Bachman Heisler with a few additional details. This is a Banta Model Works cab and uh, extended uh, bunker uh, on the tender here with a, with a real wood load. The headlight, this is interesting for those of you wanting to convert one of these or maybe backdate it a little bit. This headlight is from a Bachman Porter and it's a drop-in replacement. You just pull it off the Porter, pull this uh, headlight off of here and you can drop in the Porter headlight just like that. It works great. Lots of little details on here. Stuff from uh, Weissman Model Services, etc. Let me turn it around so you can see the other side. We've got an engineer here, an artista figure, and a fireman back there. And you might be able to see he's got a one of those pieces of cord wood in his hands, getting ready to toss it in. Pick, axe, shovel, all that stuff is uh, from uh, Weissman Model Services. Toolbox on the back, which is scratch built, uh, custom decals, the whole shebang. The funny thing is, is that the the Heisler of all the geared locomotives out there, um, the Stearns Heisler is probably my least favorite. <laughs> I really like Shays a lot. Uh, I like Shays and I like uh, the Climax and stuff like that, especially Type A Climax is, is one of my favorite geared locomotives. Uh, but, you know, this one just runs so great and it ended up looking pretty good. I based the look of it sort of on the Dixie Anna Shea at, uh, up at Roaring Camp in, near Santa Cruz, California. It's got the same kind of color scheme. One of my favorites to run, just a, just a joy, the R.H. Gurr. And then there's the interesting story of locomotive number nine. Um, this is another Bachman 042 Porter. Unfortunately, uh, it's got a bad decoder in it, and it's just one of these projects that's been on the back burner for so long that I've forgotten it and remembered it several times <laughs> to, uh, to swap out the decoder in it. I'd also like to add sound to it. And I'm also going to change the name. This one's no longer going to be the Admiral Fowler. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it something else. I haven't decided exactly what yet. And the reason I'm, gonna, I'm changing the name is because I have a new Admiral Fowler, a second Admiral Joe Fowler, and that's another uh, 440, but we'll get to that uh, a little bit later on down the line here. If you have any suggestions, Disney Imagineer names, you know, Disney Animator names, Disney Artist names, that would be uh, appropriate for number nine, let me know in the comments, and uh, who knows, I might use it when I finally get around to fixing this thing so it runs again. Number nine, good looking engine, really love the uh, color scheme. Unfortunately, not a great runner. Here's another work in progress, uh, locomotive number 10. And some of you may recognize this. This is a Bachman World War I trench locomotive, 262. Doesn't ordinarily have a tender. Uh, this is a tender from the Cumberland Shops. The stack is also from the Cumberland Shops. I'm going to be doing a new laser cut cab for it, too, removing this... Uh, um, stock coal bunker here on the back and have a larger uh, cab here, a taller cab too. Uh, the stack may look ridiculously tall compared to this cab, but that's because the cab is super short. You have to be about 5'4 <laughs> to fit in this cab. So I'm going to get one that's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. 
those of you who watch my channel regularly probably haven't even seen this one before because I haven't really run it that often out on the line. It doesn't show up in a lot of videos. It's been sitting on the shelf, uh, you know, with all of my other <laughs> unfinished projects, the, shel the shelf of shame, I call it. Uh, but uh, I'll get to it eventually. And that brings up uh, number 11 here, the Sam McKim. And I just love this locomotive. <laughs> um, it's, it's a pretty good runner. Uh, uh, it's, it's built on a, a Bachman modern HO440 Richmond. You can still find some of those out there. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful. It's not the it's not the traditional you know uh, Bachman four four row the kind of eighteen seventies eighteen eighties style. It's a more modern take on the four four row, a little bit bigger, larger boiler, larger drivers, all that. So it it kind of translates better to ON thirty, though it does still make for a very small locomotive in ON thirty, and that's the thing I like about it. I like the the small dimensions. I like the, 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 the way it looks. It looks like a theme park locomotive. <laughs> that's, that's what I enjoy so much about it. Uh, the work I did on it, you know, new cab, new headlight. Um, the cab is all laser cut, decals, paint, all that stuff. Um, Sam McKim, by the way, is, uh, was a Disney artist um, who was responsible for all of those wonderful fun maps that uh, you used to be able to get at the park those big huge maps i have a couple of them in my collection from back in the uh you know the 60s and the 70s sam mckim was the guy that drew those and he did for the for the most part there were other artists that did them too but sam mckim did did the first ones and i uh, did a wonderful job always enjoyed his his artistic style uh so i thought i would name this wonderful toy-like looking locomotive after Sam McKim. And if, you, if you've if you never seen a stock Bachman Richmond modern 440, that's a mouthful, uh, stay tuned because the next locomotive, you'll see what one looks like before it's converted. So this one is a stock Bachman Richmond modern 440, number 124 here, uh, decaled for the Great Northern. This is going to be Thunder Mesa number 12. When I get around to it, not sure what the name is going to be yet, but uh, once again, open to suggestions. If you uh, have a favorite Imagineer or Disney artist, uh, you know, put their name down in the comments, and uh, that might up, might end up being uh, number twelve on the Thunder Mesa line. So I'm going to give this one basically the same treatment as uh, number eleven there because I'm so pleased with the way it turned out. So eleven and twelve are going to be basically twins more or less though the domes are different on this one i like the old-fashioned fluted domes that'll make for a nice uh, contrast now, number 13 is not a locomotive at all but the uh, galumphing goat rail bus <laughs> i did this as a project for the gruesome gulch layout originally uh, this is a uh, a bachman uh, rio grande southern rail truck an early goose and I made a interchangeable freight boxes for it, one for Thunder Mesa and one for Gruesome Gulch, which looked more like a hearse. And that was a fun little project, and um, this was a fun little thing to run around the land. Even though the era is wrong, it's wrong, wrong, wrong for Thunder Mesa, uh, they wouldn't have a, a motorized uh, gasoline-powered vehicle like this. this. This thing is from the 30s, and... Uh, the era for Thunder Mesa is 1890 to uh, 1910, so it doesn't really fit. Um, I might be selling this one, so stay tuned for that. But keep in mind that at the moment it uh, is not running. Uh, it needs a, a gear replacement. So if you're someone who's good at replacing the gears on these, uh, these Bachman rail trucks, then uh, this might be for you. Yeah, I think I'm going to move uh, the number 13 on down the line, but uh, take a long last look at her here on the trestle. Looks good sitting there, doesn't it? And here is locomotive number 14. As you can see, there is no locomotive number 14, either that or it's invisible, but there will be a number 14 at some point in the future. I'm saving that spot for a Shea. I would really like a Shea to run on the Thunder Mesa layout, so... Number 14, whenever it shows up, will likely be a Shea. Unfortunately, the Bachman Shea's 
uh, will not operate on a 15, well, they will and they won't, on a 15 inch radius curve like I have here on the Thunder Mesa layout. Need to figure that technical problem out and when I do, we will have a number 14, a Shea, running on the Thunder Mesa layout. Looking forward to that day. And last but not least, we have the number 15, which is a uh, Bachman outside frame 440. They're a little bit longer than the inside frame 440, more, mo more modern looking. This is the most modern locomotive that I run on the Thunder Mesa layout. Uh, this would be brand new in about 1910. Even has an electric headlight and a generator up here, as you can see. Um, this one is the new Admiral Joe Fowler. I'm uh, naming it for... Uh, Admiral Joe, <laughs> one of the early uh, general managers of Disneyland, good friend of Walt Disney, um, helped with the Rivers of America and the Columbia and the Mark Twain Riverboat and all that stuff. Um, very instrumental to the early operating days of Disneyland. Really love this engine. It is a great runner. I don't know what else to say about it. Sounds great. Looks great. Runs great. Needs more work. I'm working on this one a little bit at a time rather than biting it off all at once. Recently, I just decaled it. I'll be adding some more details to the cab, etc. Some more nautical touches, too. I've got a little laser-cut ship's wheel that I'm going to mount on the back of the tender to give it the nautical feel for Admiral Joe. But uh, so far, this one is... The last one on the roster, number 15. There's no number 16 yet. But wait, don't run off yet. I do have a couple more. Technically, these are not Thunder Mesa locomotives. They're not on the roster, but they're on, um, you might say, permanent loan <laughs> to the Thunder Mesa Mining Company. Ex Estrella and Sonora Grande, number two, and number three. Number two, the Estrella, and number three, the Rattler. These wonderful little porters were heavily modified and reworked and painted and detailed by the late Vern Niner. And I did a whole video on uh, Vern Niner's ON30 Legacy on one of the Workbench Wednesdays. If you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out where I talked about this stuff a little bit more. But I'm very happy to have these in my collection. I have no intention of ever changing them or repainting them for, for Thunder Mesa or anything. I, I like them just the way they are. Uh, both superb runners, beautiful little locomotives. Love them. Love them to death. Thanks for joining me today for this Workbench Wednesday vlog. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Thunder Mesa Mining Company's locomotive roster, at least as it exists as of this day in January 2024. Things could change without notice. You never know. Uh, until next time, you can also follow us over on Instagram at Thunder.Mesa and see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at ThunderMesa.Studio. And if you really enjoy what we're doing here at the channel, you can do what these great folks did and go over to Patreon.com slash ThunderMesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.